Watch that blind pick going to come into play. We're going to see ABC not going with what we predicted on the desk. It is going to be something that they really did make popular. It's going to be that elemental shaman backed up by the rope. I think it's too early to say who actually won the mind game in the blind pick. I'm really thrown off that ABC didn't play the Windwalker Mage Restoration Druid. It's the composition that they won BlizzCon with. I mean, it was Arcane instead of Frost, but it's the same idea. Mage chucks out damage and kites while the Windwalker does tons of damage to two melee classes. I'm really surprised to not see ABC steal that strategy. Perhaps they haven't been keeping that composition up on point in terms of practice. We do see the Pumpers getting aggressive here on Asgarath. They're trying to run down the healer, but a nice thunderstorm with that Traveling Storm's Honor Talent on Jamie, knocking back the entire team, allowing Asgarath to easily escape. Nerd Rage now under fire. Yeah, a lot of pressure here from ABC early on. Drainer is looking to deny that with the Life Cocoon. He's already traded out Trinket and Way of the Crane, so Pumper's a little bit vulnerable in the situation. And yeah, I think it's a little bit too early to say. Maybe ABC, they realize that they can beat uh, the Pumpers with this composition as well, especially if they have a, you know, a lot more practiced and prepared. It doesn't seem bad on paper to me. The Elemental Shaman is going to be very durable against the Death Knight and the Warrior. The only really, the only real vulnerability target here for me is uh, Nixie. So Nixie's going to have to do a really good job keeping up his defensive cooldowns. Drainer under fire right now as he rolls away with Cheat Torpedo. Having to use Revival Whoa. as well. Still getting low. Jamie on top of him. Nixie looking to reconnect. If he can land a full kidney shot, Drainer could be in a lot of trouble. A huge Earth Shock. Drainer almost getting taken down early on here against ABC. Caught the uh -oh. kidney shot. Perfect Shadow Step. Stormkeeper channeled out. Jamie dealing devastation. But Drainer with the protection of that anti magic zone appears to have survived. Oh, imagine if he was able to get a thunderstorm and knock Drainer out of that anti-magic zone. I think he would have just gotten eradicated there in game number one, but this composition definitely looks deadly. Now the Pumper's trying to reverse the pressure onto Nixie. Way the Crane is going to deny all of the damage ABC hasn't been able to generate so far, but Drainer now, no Trinket, no Life Cocoon, no Revival, no Touch of Car, no, nothing available for him as Asgaroth gets swapped to. He's in a little bit of trouble though. Stormbolt follows up the Light Sweep. Asgaroth trying to escape, but Cervantes in Nerd Rage all over him. He has to kite away. Jamie looking to back him up with the Hex. Asgaroth and Barathorn still trying to get away. He can does manage to do so and stabilize, but it seems like for both of these teams, the main pressure point has been both the healers. Yep, switching to the healer. Asgrath choosing not to even run with Cyclone, trying to play a very passive game. So far, it looks like they've got opportunities to win on just burst damage alone, and it's probably better for Asgrath to just focus solely on healing so that he can maximize his mana efficiency and outdo Drainer on that Mystery for Monk, whereas Cyclone would just likely tap his mana faster. And without the Polymorph effect of a Mage, there's no real good combination with that spell. So Asgrath's going to a very safe, efficient build when facing the Pumpers here in game number one. Although now getting caught in midfield as Cervantes and Nerd Rage try and chop him up, they managed to pull Barkskin, maybe even more pressure. A bit of a mistake, but Asgrath stacking up on the team. That allowed Nixie to get cleaved down, and now they're gonna switch their attention to him. Asgrath's gonna have to expend even more resources on the swap, costing him a lot of mana. Feared on his innervates, no Tremor Totem. Wait, when, when did he use Tremor Totem? Tremor, uh, it should only line up with the Intimidating Shout, unless I'm He's playing, he's not playing Song of Chi-Gi. No, definitely not. That was a big mistake on Jamie's part. That definitely cost Asgarath a lot of mana, unable to use that Innervate in the Intimidating Shout. Well, Nerdridge might have faked him out by running over to Jamie and Asgarath when they were lined up. If, As if Jamie got caught into the fear, then he would have to trade out his Trinket in order to get the Tremor Totem down. So maybe there was some mind games going on there, but you're right, typically you only see the Tremor Totem with that intimidating shout. Unfortunately, that's going to allow the Pumpers to get a little bit more pressure, but ABC has stabilized. Nerd Rage under fire, still all over Nixie. And like I kind of talked about, Nixie is the most vulnerable target in this matchup. No evasion, no faint, no nothing. He does have the vanish if he needs to in order to escape. Jamie's been doing a great job finding damage onto Nerd Rage with the blinds uh, into a full hex on the Drainer. That's very nicely done by ABC. Cervantes responds with his anti-magic zone, but Nerd Rage still really struggling to get his health back up. Yeah, and if he gets wind sheared, it could be a die by the sword force. Traveling Storms punch Cervantes and Nerd Rage away, but they are able to reconnect and running Nourish instead of that Cyclone allows Asgarath huge, powerful, single target healing. If they're not attacking him, it's really unlikely they'll kill any target through that Nourish spam. We see another swap attempt from ABC looking to go after Drainer. Huge Earthshock. 
Drainer ports out a line of sight, but with multiple Dyer's Maledix absorbing all of his heals, he activates Left Cocoon precautiously to try and avoid a near-death experience and manages to survive the all-in from ABC. Potentially, they're just going to try and stay on him. Paralysis on Nixie is holding him at bay. Jamie's still trying to position aggressively. Grounding Totem on the Glyre's Maledix. Well played by Jamie. Able to avoid that healing absorption effect. Mana now in favor of Drainer as we enter dampening. ABC though, their burst and their swaps are explosive. They look to try and catch Drainer out of position. He trades the Fortifying Brew and a defensive Tremor Totem should be more than enough for Drainer to escape. Both teams really mixing it up in game number one. It's still too close to call. Slight lead for the Pumpers but the Pumpers are behind in this current situation. Drainer has a way of the crane if he really needs to to top Nerd Rage back off. Nerd Rage getting bursted down by Jamie. Drainer has to be careful. He doesn't have a trinket. If he gets caught in crowd control, Nerd Rage could ultimately fall. Asgrath getting gripped in. Good burst pressure here from the Pumpers onto the Restoration Druid. Jamie falling low as well. This is really good cleave damage coming in from the Pumpers. Jamie might have to play a little bit defensive. Drainer pushes in with the way of the crane. Wants to potentially take Jamie down. Lightning Lasso looking to deny the kill, but Jamie's just so low. Nerd Rage reconnects. Execute comes in. Drainer closes it out, and the Pumpers with the lead in game number of one series. The team that wins this moves forward. The other team is done. So right now they're equal in this tournament with how many points they're gonna grab. But whoever makes it to the next series almost gets enough to tie it up. So this series really is going to currently be potentially for fourth, depending on how some of those other teams do. But when you talk about teams like Chalky Milkman and Plot Twist that were slightly behind those squads, they're not in the tournament anymore. So this series right here really is going to be important coming out of week number five of cup number five who are going to be those top four teams in Europe it's all about third and fourth as the bubble is about to be burst between the pumpers and ABC winning that blind pick is important on broadcast the pumpers 3-2 to ABC as a result of it and I think ABC second guessing their composition advantage with the Windwalker mage maybe it wasn't prepared as much maybe they didn't think it was worth preparing but after wildcard gaming three out pumpers earlier in the day it certainly must have been although now ABC have this Ellie mage composition which is super effective into the pumpers on these large maps such as Tolveron but when we bounce onto the smaller maps then the pumpers can overcome that disadvantage and because they won game number one they will always get to pick that small map advantage should this series swing to a game number five so at some point ABC are going to either have to win on a small map with the LA Mage or switch to that Windwalker Mage composition. And so far, I would like to see them go back on that Windwalker Mage composition. They won BlizzCon with it. Sure, it was a couple of years ago, but uh, I'm sure that Alec and Nixie could pick it up if they absolutely needed to. And it, it looked so good for Wildcard Gaming. I would be very surprised to not see them try it at some point in the series. Yeah, and so far, the Pumpers have been playing very passive. It has been ABC who has been pushing in, looking for damage, but the Pumpers, they're comfortable to just play at this large pillar. Nerd Rage actually marching forward a little bit, as well as Cervantes. They are Im implementing a split strategy right now. And Drainer, one thing he does really well in this matchup, or on the Mistweaver Monk in general, is he's always relaying that Serpent Jade statue. Really, really important. And that's the kind of high-level Mistweaver gameplay we want to see. It's basically free healing for your team. It uh, basically duplicates your Soothing Mist onto a target. And as long as it's in line of sight, it's a lot of healing per second. That doesn't cost the Mistweaver any amounts of mana whatsoever. So consistently want to see that repositioned for Drainer, and he's been doing a great job with that so far in the tournament. Pumpers engaging in an attack on Jamie, gripping him to the pillar and stunning him. This is an effective strategy when playing a Death Knight melee cleave composition on Tolveron Arena when versing a Frost Mage or a Spellcaster cleave. You play at the pillar and you use Death Grip to pull an enemy member of the team and isolate them at the pillar so that you can attack them for free and avoid casted spells by using the pillar which is close to you. Then after you've gripped in the target, you chase them and you have to gauge how far it can you chase them before you're going to be counter-aggressed. So they chased Alec here into midfield until they saw Frozen Orb. As soon as Frozen Orb was down, Nerdred says, okay, I had enough of this. He leaps back to the pillar. Then they do the Death Grip. They grip Jamie in. They try and burst him down. They have to gauge how far out do we want to chase Jamie. Right now, it looks like they're pretty happy to chase him with the Frozen Orb having already been used. They know that Alex's damage will be lower, but with the Lightning Lasso, maybe not low enough. They managed to break it up. Cervantes recovers, and now he's decided, all right, we've spent enough time in midfield. It's getting too threatening out there. Let's go back to the box, wait for Death Grip, and set up again. Yep, and the Pumpers, they haven't been afraid to implement the strategy at all. In cup number three against Method Black, 
they waited until 30% dampening, just hiding out until it was favorable for them to make trades with the Frost Mage and the Restoration Druid. So I think it's likely we see that again. Drainer just wants to position very far away. I don't think Cervantes or Nerd Rage are going to overextend too much. Now Alex lends a beautiful crowd control, but off the back of that, all three members of the Pumpers will be looking to run away. And what we want to see from the Pumpers is them be able to extend their uptime to the port where they can get through Temporal Shield as well as Iron Bark from Asgarath. And if they can get through those defensive cooldowns, which have a very short cooldown, that's when they can start getting the big ones like the Ice Block from Alex. So they need the uptime. Alex has been playing relatively aggressive so far, and that's allowed Nerd Rage and Cervantes, allowing them to get a lot of uptime in this matchup without really compromising their position too much. They're close to the pillar. Trainer moves in, gets the incapacitate over onto Asgarath with the Paralysis. Alec responds with the Temporal Shield, and still, the Pumpers don't have the damage they need to take Alec down just yet. Yep, not enough in that push. It will be the Gladiator's Maledict Trinket that the Pumpers need to utilize. Although Cervantes hit back, needs to get back to the pillar. This is what I was saying. You have to measure how much can we take going out into the midfield, and in that push, they did not get an ice block, so Cervantes overextended a lot, and now has retreating back to the pillar. As the Arms Warrior, you don't use Heroic Leap very heroically in this matchup. You're using it to run away cowardly. Not so cowardly, I would say strategically, away from your opponents in this specific matchup because they're so disadvantaged fighting in the midfield. They have to use these mobility to abilities to run away rather than engage their opponents. So Nerd Rage realizing that is always saving the Heroic Leap to retreat rather than jump into the battle. Well, I have to disagree. Sometimes it is heroic to walk away from a dangerous situation, Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> so Nerd Rage opting to implement that strategy in this matchup as we have just entered dampening. And for Mana, Drainer and Asgarath are going to be relatively even at this point. I think Asgarath has been able to sneak away and get drinks. So his Mana is topped off. And we'll have to see at what point in the game the Pumpers are going to be feeling confident enough to really push forward. I think what it's going to come down to is Either Jamie or Alec will overextend a little bit. That will allow Nerd Rage and Cervantes free uptime in the match, and that's when they can really start getting the, the damage out that they need to start making something happen. All right, let's see if they can get some swaps here. They've gripped Alec in as Garath defends. Iron Park appears to be more than enough. Also, what Nerd Rage is doing is whenever that Death Grip strategy engages, he jumps into Battle Stance, which then removes the negative effects of Defensive Stance, which reduces his damage. As soon as the Death Grip swap doesn't net them a kill or they've gotten a cooldown, then we see Nerd Rage immediately go back into Defensive Stance, where he can reduce the incoming damage and allow Drainer to maintain his mana for what is likely to be a late game between these two teams in two compositions. I would say overall, Nerd Rage definitely skips capped on that arms warrior we've seen other arms warriors when they go head to head with this frost mage elemental shaman composition make it look like they can't even move so nerd rage is definitely doing the best that he can but will it be enough if they are actually able to beat abc on tolver on their best map and their best comp advantage then i don't see why the pumpers wouldn't just clean sweep the series and move on which would be devastating for change my mind or for abc because change my mind is already advanced and they were ahead and then this gives good opportunity for the pumpers to get ahead of them and knock them into fifth place which then means they need a very good showing in the sixth and final cup in these final tournaments it's going down to the wire for that third and fourth place spot it definitely is and that's why you can't blame the pumpers for doing everything they can to swing this matchup uh, in their favor especially when they are down in terms of compositional like the compositionally as well as uh, the map does not favor them whatsoever so really trying to just force ABC to not have that sort of wide open playing field forcing them to push in. Drainer in crowd control now as it looks like ABC. They want to try to get something done. Nerd Rage could be in some trouble. Anti-Magic Zone denies the damage for now, but that's a big victory for ABC. Cervantes won't have that available for another minute and 45 seconds. And that is a big safety net for the Pumpers in this particular matchup. Jamie's positioning just so far away. Alex never really overextending. I'm curious to see what build he's playing. We've seen him implement different strategies um, in the past, like the Prismatic Armor in order to uh, avoid a lot of damage, but Nerd Rage getting swapped to with an interrupt on Drainer. Now Dive of the Sword gets traded out. Nerd Rage overstayed his welcome in the open and is going to be tactically retreating once again. Yeah, I mean, 
it's not that tactical. He has no other choice at this point. <laughs> if it was tactical, he wouldn't have been out there that long in the first place. And that's why it is so difficult as the warrior in this matchup to pick your moments when to go in and when to go out because you feel like obligated that you need to be forcing cooldowns. But if you stay out just a little bit too long, then suddenly your whole defensive line is taken out and you can't stay in longer the next time you want to push. And it's all about picking your timing and picking your window. But the longer you wait, deeper into dampening, then Cervantes becomes a target. And everything starts falling apart. They've got a couple of seconds before Glyre's Medallion available for Alex, so he's trying to take advantage of that, gripping him in and dishing out tons of damage. Thunderstorm by Jamie backs up Alec, buying him time to get out of the stun and now potentially to retreat. Alec is trying to fake cast with Blizzard so that he can then blink into midfield. Doesn't manage to fake cast, although soaking out interrupt to then sneak in with a polymorph. Alec actually blinking in aggressively, so this is where Nerd Rage would look to try and punish, but because his defensive lineup got blown out earlier, he's not able to punish a blink play like that, so instead has to retreat away. Yeah, and Alec is playing that Netherwind armor, which reduces the chance he will be critically struck by 15%. I think it's really intelligent from Alec as he is the main target in this matchup. It's going to be difficult for Nerd Rage and Cervantes to sort of push through those defenses. Alec gets gripped in, blinks away once again. I think Drainer actually went for the leg sweep there, unfortunately missed. Alec, with a really good read, was able to shimmer to safety in line of sight of Asgarath, not getting caught into that stun. Drainer moving forward, looking for a paralysis onto Asgarath. Alec looking to deny with the temporal shield, but this is the push we want to see from the pumpers. Can they get the first ice block from Alec? They get Iron Bark. Temporal shield, the first two check marks. Now looking for the ice block, but Cervantes may have overstayed his welcome. A full hex secured there by Jamie, backing up Alec. Now Cervantes could be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, he certainly could. Although Drainer is on Polymorph to Ministry turn, I would think that he wants to pop his way of the crane, make a big push for an ice block during this diminishing return cycle. Let's see if they decide to go for it. Drainer doesn't have a lot of mana to work with if he wants to make that decision. He's staying on top of Alec, potentially baiting out a Polymorph, but is it really baiting out a Polymorph this deep into dampening? It's more like you're just risking everything. Cervantes falls behind and has to trade his entire arsenal to stay alive. Drainer is still getting crowd controlled. Cervantes is just hiding around the corner, just getting sniped by Jamie. Drainer in desperation rolls over. Lightning Lasso might KO. Cervantes breaks out. Soothing Mist, where's the blink counter spell? Drainer needs to be afraid of that. Doesn't He doesn't even care. He's just going to pop away the crane. It's time to go. They need to get an ice block with this push. Do they have enough damage to do it? Asgarath really not responding in time. Temporal Shield appears to be enough. Drainer uses the Gyre's Medallion to go for the kill. Alec respects that and trades the first ice block of the game. But at that 40% dampening mark, that's the magic number to kill a Death Knight. You're only one ice block up, and Asgarath still has a lot of mana. It's looking solid for ABC. Yeah, ABC still very durable. They didn't overlap the Iron Bark with the Ice Block, which is something we typically see. So nice read there by ABC. Just confident trading out the Ice Block. They still have one available. Like you mentioned, now Cervantes is going to be feeling very vulnerable, especially Drainer with no Trinket. If he does push in, he gets caught into a Hex or a Polymorph. All of a sudden, they, or the Pumpers, they don't have a healer in the matchup. And we kind of talked about Cervantes won't be able to keep himself alive with the amount of dampening we see. Drainer with a beautiful Ring of Peace, knocking Alec into the leg sweep. What are they going to be able to get done? Asgarath trades out Iron Bark, denying a lot of the incoming damage and deny, or empowering his heals to keep Alec alive. Jamie has to find some counter pressure here. Drainer with a beautiful paralysis pushing in onto Alec, but Alec has managed to survive so far, dropping a frozen orb. Nerd and Cervantes that are gonna be tanking a lot of that damage, but Alec actually kiting out of his own damage, unfortunately. Because of that, Cervantes and Nerd Rage not going to be feeling too punished. Drainer life cocooning before opening his school of magic to cast. That way it's absorbed all this damage, but now still getting chained into more crowd control. And this is the disadvantage their composition plays on Tolveron. ABC have set themselves up quite well to pull off a victory here in game number two. We're at that magic point of dampening where the Death Knight is just so vulnerable, barely hanging on. Gets Thunderstorm punted out of the anti magic zone. Nice play on Jamie's part. Stormkeeper channels. Will this defense be? enough or will it crack here Cervantes holds on Drainer tries to lead the charge with that way of the crane but now caught in midfield and Cervantes gets sniped by Jamie Drainer leaving him alone for far too long and ABC execute perfect strategy. In game number one uh, I expect the pumpers to be going after Asgarath 
Steve and potentially Jamie later on in the match. Basically, anyone on ABC is a kill target, but I would imagine Asgraf, at least in the start, will be their primary target here. Everyone's got a target on their back. Let's see if ABC can turn this series around or if the Puffers are going to get themselves on match point. Yeah, the Pumpers are battling to overthrow ABC in that fourth place position. Take it and with it qualify potentially to the spring finals. Of course, we still have one more cup after this, but you'd probably rather be safe than sorry and just be ahead on points in general moving forward. Huge burst and swaps onto the healers of both teams here in game number three as Trainer gets blinded on the way of the crane. He's got a tough decision. Does he trinket to get aggressive and heal his team to full or does he try and sit and get ahead? It looks like he's trying to sit through the crowd control, but this is also a risky decision as pressure is developing on Cervantes. He will have to rely on his death strikes. It's oh! now. That was Beautiful. insane. That was great. such a nice port by Drainer. Nixie got gripped away, went for the Shadow Step Kidney, and Drainer ported at the same time. Completely lost all pressure and momentum. That was going to be disastrous for Drainer. He sat the blind into a full sap on 50% health. Shadow Step Kidney incoming, but he was able to port away off the back of that grip from Cervantes. So good teamwork by the Pumpers, denying that fairly obvious play from ABC, but nonetheless a sick play. All right, Nerd Rage now getting pressured. I'm wondering if he should have been the target the entire time through that blind crowd control chain. It's just going after a Death Knight before dampening, unless you've strategically set your composition up to destroy a Death Knight, it just never works out. If they had been attacking Nerd Rage instead, they could have at least got Die by the Sword in that push. So ABC's targeting is definitely not on point here in game number three, and it's looking unlikely that they're going to be able to win the swing match, which the Pumpers have set themselves up so well. Drainer gets swap to how much damage does jamie have in his pocket any magic zone protecting drainer for now thunderstormed out of it i really like that traveling storms thunderstorm on nixie to punt drainer out of that defense that manages to net them a life cocoon hex on the transcendence portal unfortunately breaking a little bit prematurely which is now allowing drainer a lot of uptime it's adding a ton of damage towards nixie mind free secured on asgrof oh. nixie could fall very early on nerd rage leaps over secures the double fear and the pumpers move up to match point uh, that's not what you want to do in the swing match abc pumpers looking great here and the question is are they going to even need to go to a game to be the number one in your region that is another way to get it all the way to the final so these roster changes definitely warranted Definitely a whole lot of fun to watch, but here we need to see if the Pumpers can close it out. All right, ABC throw away their swing match. That could have been an opportunity for them to try a new composition. Now they have to do it potentially when they're on match point, as we do expect ABC to take game four here. It's a very similar situation as to what we saw on Colveron Arena. Drainer is getting a little bit more ahead of himself, though, in this match, activating that wave of the crane right off the bat, trying to maybe look, look for an ice block within the first couple of seconds. Legs deep on Alec. No defense activated just yet to Portal Shield now. Soaks up a ton of damage. Will immediately top Alec off. In the meantime, Drainer was hexed. No counter aggression really getting developed at all, though. Once again, ABC attacking Cervantes before dampening, I think, is a mistake. I would, I would much rather see their damage used on Nerd Rage. He doesn't have access to Death Strike like a Death Knight. He's not self-sustainable. The Pumpers showing that they're willing to take risks, though, now that they're on match point and they've got a game to work with. Because of that leniency, Drainer can maybe get a little more aggressive and catch ABC off guard and potentially just walk away with the series right now. Yeah, what I want to see the Pumpers do, although it's unlikely just with their consistent damage, they are able to take someone down from ABC. I think with three Gladiators Maledicts, that is a recipe for disaster. And if they can line those up perfectly, they could potentially take down someone from ABC uh, quite quickly, like Alec, especially if he doesn't respond appropriately. So I don't mind these offensive pushes early on, although I think it's unlikely they're really going to net too many defensive cooldowns from ABC. Although, as I say that, Alec taking a little bit of damage, Drainer caught into the Hex has been forced to trade out his life cocoon preemptively onto Nerd Rage to avoid a little bit of damage. But now, once again, the Pumpers, they're forced to retreat just a little bit. Alex still kiting out into the open. Nice ring of peace there by Drainer, forcing Alex back into the open so Nerd Rage and Serpentis can start generating some pressure. All right, Nerd Rage getting swapped too. Good target adaptation by ABC. Although Drainer is just going for Way of the Crane way more frequently, much more so than we saw in Tolveron, and that could be the X factor in the Pumpers getting a kill early on against the ABC on what is supposed to be their comp and map advantage. Nerd Rage pinned down at the starting area, trying to line of sight Alec while Drainer sits through crowd control, and as soon as that crowd control is over, charges back into the battle. 
Trainer transcendency and across to get to the pillar. They do not want to stay out in the open very long. The pumpers need to have their positioning on point. Nerd Rage even going for the first aid. Not very often we see that profession utilized. Nerd Rage trying to take whatever little edge and advantage that he can get. First aid certainly not going to be as potent as the death strike, though, for him. So he's not going to totally stabilize. We see a swap to Cervantes. Again, I, I'm not a big fan of this. Deeper and dampening I am. That, that's exactly what they should be. But the more time they spend attacking Cervantes, the more time Nerd Rage can spend in battle stance, which increases his damage overall. And I think slowly over time, if ABC keep attacking Cervantes, Nerd Rage might be able to carry. But Nerd Rage also under fire right now as Life Co Cocoon does connect from Drainer to keep him alive and stable. Asgras managing quite well still, is able to kite away and uh, go for drinks when he really needs to. The pumpers, I think even with the Mystery Monk, aren't going to have a huge mana lead just with how defensive they've been playing. Although this is a nice attempt here from ABC. Anti-Magic Zone gets dropped out. Nerd Rage charges back in. Malik has to kite out of the safety of that Anti-Magic Zone, forcing Nerd Rage to be a little bit vulnerable. But he heroic leaps away once again. Now a full polymorph secured on Drainer. But Nerd Rage with his first aid will keep himself stable. All right, Nerd Rage survives that attack for now. Icy Vein still available for Alec. He could pull that at any moment. He's actually got Ray of Frost and Frozen Orb. Going for the Ray of Frost Frozen Orb before, but gets Mind Frozen. Not able to keep Nerd Rage in the Frozen Orb. It's a pretty big mistake though on Alec's part. He's gonna lose some big damage as a result. Jamie able to escape with that Ghost Wolf. However, trading Astral Shift. Now with no Glyre to Dying and no Astral Shift, Jamie is susceptible to that Death Grip strategy if he's pulled to the pillar again. And Asgarath needs to be prepared for that. Yep, and you can see there, Alec actually not playing the Concentrated Coolness build, so has the good old-fashioned Frozen Orb. You have to actually aim. It will be slowly moving, so Nerd Rage and Cervantes can uh, avoid that. But I think it's smart, because Alec being the main target, if Nerd Rage and Cervantes are chasing him down, he's going to be able to easily get a lot of value out of that Frozen Orb. And then, like we kind of talked about, he gets the added defense of that Netherwind Armor, which makes him very tanky against the Arms Warrior and the Unholy Death Knight if they get significant uptime on him. Asgarath throwing out the Iron Bark. And now going for a drink, should be able to successfully reset his mana completely. And I believe in the last match, it was about 40% dampening where ABC was eventually able to take Cervantes down. So I think it's likely we get to that point in this matchup once again. Nerd Rage, he's going to be mounting up. Doesn't want to waste his mobility um, getting to Alex. So if he's on his mount, he might be able to move forward without using Ooh. charge. There's a nice grip, a ring of peace attempt by Drainer, but Alec a easily able to just blink away with the shimmer into the open, and now both Asgrath and Jamie should be able to back him up. All right, Cervantes Nerd Rage making a push. What can they get done? Jamie's looking to counter aggress this assault with the Stormkeeper, Lightning Bolts. Alec soaks the hits with that Temporal Shield. Needs to be enough. Drainer looks like he wants to wave the crane. Battle stance activated. Bad timing as a huge Earth Shock comes in. This is a risky choice by Nerd Rage. Going in battle stance to try and get a block. He's getting counter-aggressed quite heavily. Drainer is just praying that he gets polymorphed. He wants to be put on diminishing return so he can wave the crane, but they're just refusing to polymorph him before that diminishing return. So Drainer decides, all right, we spent too long in the deep end. It's time to go back to the shore, hide at the pillar. But now Cervantes gets left behind, and switching to him deeper and dampening is definitely effective strategy. We saw it work wonders in game number two on Tolvron, and it's likely to do the same in game number four. Alec gets gripped in, able to blink again instantly away from any incoming stuns. Ring of Peace bounces Alec in, but then Thunderstorm punts the entire team away. Looks like they want to make a push with this. Way of the Crane could be a huge hit. Alec needs to be ready. He's relying on the Temporal Shield, but it's not enough. Finally, an Ice Block forced. The Pumper's showing signs of life. This is the perfect timing to get a first Ice Block out of the way. If there was a game for the Pumpers to win against this composition, it's setting up like this could be the best opportunity. Yep, that's exactly what they needed to do. A 10% dampening, get the first Ice Block from Alec. And now he only has one left. Won't have another one available for another five minutes. So if they can make another offensive push with Maledic Trinkets, they could get the second ice block. They could do it again. There's going to be no cold snap. So the pumpers right now, as long as they execute appropriately, I think they actually can take down the Alec in this matchup, although not favored. I still think they have a decent chance. Uh, we'll have to see what happens. Alec getting a little bit low right now. Askarath has been able to sneak away and get consistent drinks in the matchup. So his mana is quite fine. Drainer hasn't really had to do the same. The consistent damage for ABC just really isn't there just yet with how defensive the Pumpers has been playing. They've really been doing a great job picking their moments to get aggressive onto Alec. 
And I think that sort of balance between offense and defense is what is allowing them to sort of stay in this game. Yep, mana still even. Is anyone's match at this point? The pumpers are showing good signs of life in terms of aggression, though. Nerd Rage is being forced away. It's a game of chicken. It's a race to finish. Sylvanas denies the kill, but Nerd Rage would love to be spinning a little bit closer to Alec. Actually able to hit him in the animatic zone. Alec needs to position a little bit further away from that defense. Drainer gets caught, but now can go for a way of the crane push. They've got Ascraft locked down in crowd control. This could be it. This could be the second ice block. Maybe a kill if Alec under responds. Thunderstorm denies the connect. Alec holds out. Ascraft gets out of crowd control. Way of the crane activated. It's three on one towards Alec. Ner Ascraft trying to fake cast Cervantes' is interrupt. He fake casts him. No, he doesn't. He lands the the second follow-up. This could be the second block. Alec tries to blink desperately to hold on to it. Managing to kite. Hex on Drainer denies way of the crane. Polymorph on Cervantes denies some follow-up damage. Good survival tactics by Alec holding on to that second ice block. Nerd Rage now an exposed target and forced to run away. Yeah, they had to trade out a lot in order to try to get that second ice block. Unfortunately, unable to do so. And now Nerd Rage is going to be very vulnerable with no trinket. No die by the sword. I think it's unlikely we see the pumpers really push out again until Drainer has all his defenses back up. But as soon as I say that, Nerd Rage mounts up. He's looking to close out this game. Wants to get that second ice block from Alec. There is a point in the game where it's just really difficult for the Mystery of your Monk to use just his Renewing Mist as well as his Way of the Crane, Life Cocoon, to keep his team alive. So they need to try to push in and try to land a kill before that time. And I think that time is around 40% dampening. So they need to play aggressive in these moments. Alex still under fire, caught into a stun, opting not to trinket. There it is. He trinkets out with the Iron Bark from Asgard. That should allow him to kite and get away. Drainer once again holding on to his way of the crane. He wants to wait until he's on Polymorph Diminishing Return. And he's not afraid. This is one thing I like about Drainer. He's completely fine and willing to just push out in the middle of the map, still get damage rolling on Alec, basically forcing Alec to find those Polymorphs. And once he does, then Drainer is free and clear to use the way of the crane. Good burst damage coming in from Jamie onto Cervantes. He has to trade out not only his anti-magic shell, but Drainer has to respond as well with the way of the crane. He gets immediately hexed on it, but a nice war banner dropped out by Nerd Rage denies that crowd control onto Drainer. And now they can get hyper aggressive on Alec. The thing is Azkarath is running Nourish, so if they put damage into Alec and no crowd control on Azkarath, Nourish can just heal through all three members damage so easily. And the build that they're running and composition they're running should be enough for ABC to set up victory. Drainer's team needs a lot of damage and they need it right now. They're getting to that 40% dampening mark. The critical range for Death Knights to go down. It's just getting closer and closer. 31% dampening. Mana is a huge advantage in Asgrass' favor. More so contributed to Drainer using Way of the Crane more frequently. Although it seems to be necessary and I don't entirely blame him. I do like their aggressive posturing. It's Gonna look good for them maybe to get a second ice block here with an interrupt on Asgrass Nourish. So Cervantes has to interrupt uh, Asgrass oh. while Drainer tries to kill. He oh under response no. and throws the oh. series away. Drainer with the hard carry.